There's more today on special deals for some, but not for others. Not because individuals are disadvantaged, not because they've got something on merit, but because they identify as Indigenous. The Australian newspaper reports that numerous cultural institutions, nearly all of them heavily subsidised by government, so you the taxpayer, well, they're offering cheap tickets to people who identified as so-called First Nations, so Aboriginal people, Maori or Pacific Islander. For one recent performance at the Sydney Opera House, the paper reports that a standard ticket would have cost you or I $129. But someone claiming to be Aboriginal could have got the ticket for just $25 under a new initiative known as Mob Ticks. A standard adult ticket to a recent Sydney Symphony, also quoted in the paper, well, that cost $145, but a Mob Ticks price, well, that was just $15. Entry to a recent exhibition at the National Gallery of Australia in Canberra, $26. But under mob ticks, if you're Indigenous, you could get in for $16. Other institutions also offering Indigenous Australians these discounts include the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and the Sydney Fringe Festival. The institutions concerned justify these discounts as a way of increasing Indigenous access to cultural events. But since the Aboriginal people attending such events are likely to be from well-to-do urban areas, well, this just looks like another race-based distinction. I mean, how often do people from remote Australia, black or white, get to Sydney for the opera? I grew up in the country, so I know a ticket to any event in the city, well, that means travel costs, it means a night in a hotel, plus the actual ticket itself. Now, fair enough, Wanting more people to attend cultural events, especially people on lower incomes, well, that's a good thing. Fair enough also, wanting to make allowances for the tyranny of distance. But if that's the case, offer a discount to people on low incomes, like pensioners or those living outside our capital cities. Don't offer it to people simply because they identify as Indigenous and therefore are assumed to be disadvantaged. I mean, I reckon it's demeaning to assume that just because someone is Indigenous, they can't pay their way. It's also a scheme where, as reported today, there's no checks and balances here. Anyone can identify as Indigenous to get the cheap tickets and no proof is required. So theoretically, taxpayers could end up subsidising anyone who ticks the box on Indigenous, whether they are or not. Now, it's difficult to avoid the suspicion here that these government-funded institutions are simply leaping aboard the indigenisation bandwagon of which the voice is the great example. Like the now ubiquitous acknowledgements of country every time someone gets up to make a speech or any time a plane lands anywhere. Like the now routine flying of the Indigenous flag co-equally with our national flag, a special price for Aboriginal people at cultural events, well, that looks like now another giant nod towards this notion that some people deserve special treatment based solely on their ancestry. Now, for a country that's always prided itself on giving a fair go to everyone, especially those most prepared to have a go, special deals for people of a particular ancestry, well, that seems almost un-Australian. Far from promoting reconciliation, Unless they're for individuals who are actually disadvantaged, special ticket deals for people based on their race, well, that just promotes resentment. We're seeing that, aren't we, with the voice? No wonder that as this voice campaign goes on, more and more Australians each day are rejecting the Prime Minister's plan to divide us by race.